Hello and welcome to the Spectrum Master Series. Join me, Ali Mishinchi, as I guide you through some of the more complex and intricate aspects of the new Spectrum iX20SE. So, where to begin with the Master Series? There is so much capability with the iX20 and the iX20SE that it's almost like we could start anywhere within the particular radio. But we're going to focus on the more intricate and uh, detailed aspects. So we'll probably brush over simple things like model select, model names, camera uh, operation and so forth and look at the more complicated and technical aspects. And for me, there's no better place to start than with wing types. I say wing types because in my opinion, that's where every model, new model setup should start, choosing the correct wing and tail type to suit your aircraft. Um, for the simple fundamental reason that the radio will then do a massive majority of the work for you. It will assign certain channels to operate certain functions on the wing and the tail, which will make your life easier and eliminate the need to have to set up different mixes later on. Just by doing correct, choosing the correct wing type, you can skip a number of stages and make the setup even simpler. As a platform to highlight and showcase the wing and different tail types, I can think of no better plane than the newly released Hangar 9 Ultra Stick PMP. The reason why I use this is it's convenient, it fits on the table, fits on the screen, but more importantly, it has a multi-surface wing and a simple tail group, but the multi-surface wing can be used and set up so the ailerons and flaps can multitask. They can work purely as ailerons and purely as flaps, but they can also be mixed together to operate as full span ailerons, um, also as crow, so where the flaps lower down and the ailerons go up. They can also have the snap flap mix set up, so when the elevator goes up, the flaps come down, which increases um, the agility, reduces the turning radius of the aeroplane. And all of that can be done very simply using the iX20 SE wing type. So I've already set up the basics, the fundamentals, model name. I've got a little picture I downloaded from the library file. I could take a picture using the camera on the back of the radio, but the model file was already there and quick and easy. I have bound the transmitter to the receiver, of course, so I have a connection with the airplane, so there's nothing there to set up. Um, this is a previously flown airplane, so it will have some trims and maybe some sub trims in there, so please don't pay too much attention to those. These are the trims that I fly with, so don't expect your radio to look exactly the same as what you see, particularly in the trim segments and maybe in the sub trim sections. Um, of course, try and set it up mechanically as much as possible. So if you have time, adjust the ball link so you have a zero sub trim or a zero trim or as close to possible. We're going to today focus on what's in the second menu, model setup, and choose the second one down, which is aircraft type. So if we click on that, or press on that, proceed. It uses proceed because it's turning off the RF signal to the, the, from the transmitter to the airplane. So it's just asking, are you sure you want to do that? Um, press yes. So as I mentioned before, this particular ultra stick is one of my development airplanes. So it's done a ton of flying. So it's already set up in the radio. But if you see in front of me in the um, aircraft type, this is basically where you choose what type of airplane you have. Um, and what I really like about the 20SE is it's very graphical and visual. Um, I've already pre-selected a wing type, which is two ailerons, two flaps. You can see there the graphic shows straightforward um, wing with one servo driving each one of the four functions. That's the type that applies to this airplane. But if we have a quick look whilst we're here, you'll see this is the selection page. We start off with the old school system of one servo controlling both ailerons. You see there graphically in the top left hand corner. To be fair, I don't know of many planes that operate that system. Some of our bind and flies do that. Um, but certainly when you get to this side, it's more common to have a servo driving each surface. So more than not, I'll see this dual aileron here, um, which for this one is not what we're gonna use. Flapperon in the bottom left hand corner um, is hopefully self-explanatory, but that's where the ailerons can operate as ailerons, but also droop as flaps or raise if you want to. Um, that's a really cool fee demonstration of how much easier using the correct wing type is because prior to wing types, I would have had to have gone and picked one servo for one aileron, one servo for the other, and then use the programmable mix feature to mix them as flaps and ailerons. Now simply choosing the flapperon feature 
and coming out of this will operate the two servos as flaperons independently without any further work. Still not the, the wing type we want to choose for this aeroplane, so we're going to scroll down. There's lots of choice by the way. You've got different elevon choices, you've got six aileron servo wing. Some of you may, may be asking what on earth would use six aileron servos. Some of the big gliders, it's quite common to see individual servos spread down the span of a wing. Some of the aerobatic, large scale aerobatic aeroplanes have multiple servos ganged together or on separate surfaces to get the performance and the power. There's Elevon for your flying wings. There's Elevon A and B. That's a directional thing. So if you chose one Elevon and you notice that when you pulled up your elevators or the pitch control worked opposite or the aileron control worked opposite to what you wanted, you simply switch to the other Elevon type and it takes care of all of that for you. Again, prior to wing types, you would have to be going in and reversing channels and then reversing mixers to different channels. It's simple as pressing one button here and the radio automatically computes everything thereafter. The one that we're working on today will be the four servo wing, which is two ailerons, two flaps. That's here. So if we click on that one, we're back to where we were. Tower type, whilst we're here, we'll have a quick look at that. On this aeroplane, it's very straightforward. It's one servo, drives the elevator, uh, which is connected on a rod either side, and then one servo drives the rudder. But there is, just like the wing type, a whole host of different options. If we just have a quick scroll through um, whilst we're here, you'll see there's normal, there's V-tail, so a lot of the gliders will use a V-tail surface where the, the, the tail surfaces will go up and down in pitch, and then also left and right for your control. Just like with Elevon, if your VTEL type that you choose isn't the correct one for your particular airplane or your particular servos and one of the functions works in reverse to what you'd like the stick movement to operate in, simply choose the other VTEL, VTEL A or VTEL B. Dual elevator, dual rudders, good example of that off the top of my head is like an A10 Warthog if you had a servo in each elevator but also wanted two servos on the rudders, just press that and it does it for you. Um, there's lots of tailorons. In fact, there's probably as many wing types as, or tail types as there is aircraft types. So, yeah, unfortunately for this particular subject, it's the most simplest one, which is nice because the wing is a more complicated one. We're showing you just a simple, straightforward. So just click on that, and then there's no learning to do at this stage. Once it's input in, inputted into those two selections, the radio has automatically worked everything out for you. You just need to come out of this menu and the RF will re-establish with receiver in the airplane and you're good to go. So now we have selected the correct wing and tail type for what we want to set up. One tip that I can give you um, as the viewer is an invaluable tip. It doesn't just apply to wing type, it applies to everything to do with using Spectrum radios. And not just the 20SE or the iX20, all of our Spectrum radios that have a monitor screen. Monitor is probably the most underused and most useful feature in our radios. And on the iX20, it's up at the top there, second menu, it's that important. Dashboard is the first one, obviously, that controls everything. And the reason why I wax lyrical about monitor is because it's a visual reference, not only to what's moving and how much, but also if you look at the top of the screen, it also shows you which one of the ports is allocated to which function. So it's actually, we've gone to the extent of naming them. So throttle, THR, is always really defaulted to channel one. Sometimes on some of the glider menus, we move that. More on that later when we bring in a glider expert, but most fixed wing starts with throttle. And after that, it's where things start to get a little bit different. And they get different depending on what wing type and tail type you choose. So for example, where I've chosen a four servo wing, or if I went even more extreme than that and chose a six servo wing, the radio will automatically assign all six servos, or four servos in my case, to particular channels, and then it's up to you to plug those channels into the corresponding receiver port. So just a quick run through on what we have here visually on the um, ultra stick. Channel one, throttle. Channel two, right aileron. Channel three is elevator. Channel four is rudder. Then channel five is left flap. Channel six is left aileron. Channel seven is right flap. And then auxiliary three, four, five, six, and seven are pretty much open for what you want to do. So when the channels are named by the radio automatically, something like throttle, elevator, rudder, whatever, 
they're the channels you want to focus on and make sure the corresponding function or the servo driving the function on the aeroplane plugs in to the corresponding receiver port so throttle right aileron elevator rudder so forth the reason for that is convenience the radio has already done all of that mixing for you so when you move the trim on the aileron it will move right and left aileron when you do a mix with flap or elevator to flap when I mix it, it will do both flaps automatically. Goes back to the old system before wing types where you'd have to go, okay, if I wanted to move the flaps in conjunction with the elevator, I would have had to have done one mix to one flap and then the same mix to the other flap. Letting the radio do all of that in wing type is so much easier. Um, so yes, do make sure your port allocation in the receiver matches what your radio is asking you to do. It will save you a lot and lot of time. So now we have the wing and tail type selected corresponding to the aeroplane that we have beside us and what we want to do with it. Also now that we've touched on allocating the right servos driving the correct function to the correct receiver output, um, let's start on setting it up. Straight out of the box it will come conventionally set up so I've got full movements here to show you a little bit clearer more visually um, the functions moving. So. You see there we have ailerons moving left and right, up and down on the elevator, left and right on the rudder. I know it's basic stuff, but I can't really stress enough. Please double, triple check your control directions um, at every stage, at this stage, halfway through setup and then before flying. Um, we also have flap set up. A little bit of crow in there right now, but you see We'll talk on more of that a bit, bit later, but we have the, the flap on the lever switch, which is pretty straightforward. Um, we'll quickly touch on it now, but in the first menu, which is model adjust. Third menu down, flap system. Select which switch. In this case, I've selected switch D, and then I have the flap percentages relation to, in relation to my um, flap switch. So position zero you see I have zero flap in and then position one I have 51% of flap and then position two I've raised it to 90%. You can also see in the right hand side of that, that 47, that's in relation to the crow. That's the ailerons when they reflex up like that to create more drag. A great, great feature of the 20SE is it's built into the flap system. Up until not too long ago, we only had two menus in this flap system, which is the flap and the elevator. We now have the third, which is the crow. So I can introduce crow at every stage. Just to give you a visual demonstration, we'll put it in the takeoff flap or flap position one. I'll highlight that crow function. And it's this one at the bottom here. If I scroll up a little bit, um, it'd be easier to see. So that's the flap movement. The second one is the elevator movement, and this one is the crow. So if you see there, I'm actually putting in spoilers, or sorry, flap with crow, but I want the other way. So I can increase it and decrease it. Now that's the, um, or reset it. Uh, let me move that one to 51. So I tend to use the first stage of flap for um, takeoff only, so I really don't need any or want any crow in that stage. So neither flying straight do I want any crow. So clean wing, just take off flat, and then the crow comes in on the third stage. That gives you an overview on crow, which is the probably the most requested um, mix that I get asked for on the ultra stick because it broadens the flight envelope hugely. It creates a bunch of drag, but also uh, loads the airplane with washout, so aerodynamically the wing tips stall later than the wing root. In layman's terms, that means you get a cleaner stall. Um, it holds the stall off a little bit more, but it's more about the fact that it stalls cleanly rather than that tip stall that some of you may have had the unfortunate um, incidents of seeing appear in one of your airplanes. So it doesn't stop it, it just prolongs it. Now with Crow, it's a real case of setting it up to your personal preference. Um, so for instance, if we have here, look here, position two is where my crow comes in. I've got 47%. That's half of the crow available movement. Why half? I could get more drag if I raise them up to 100%, which is true. But sometimes it's almost that there's too much drag 
And also to bear in mind is that the roll rate or roll control is diminished. So that's why I played with it and got to a number which was 47. 47 was a number I found with this airplane that would slow it down. I could visually see more drag going in. It wouldn't drop the airplane out of the sky where it was so much drag. The plane was still flying with a little bit of throttle. But more importantly, I still had full roll control. So if I get, got caught on a windy day with a crosswind, I didn't have to worry about a lack of roll control. So like many things, don't just go with my number of 47. Go out there, experiment, get a mistake or so high, have a play with it, be ready on the switch. If it's too much, land and reset. So that's Crow. So the next feature in our complicated multi-servo wing using the uh, wing type menu in the iX20SC is another one I get asked a lot about on this particular aeroplane and that's the full span aileron for, for servo roll, all different ways of describing it but in layman's terms it's basically where we stop just the aileron from moving for the roll, we want a faster roll rate, a more pronounced crisper axial roll say, we go to four servo wing or full span aileron so pretty clear to see there. The flaps are hinged in such a way and set up on the servo in such a way that they can move up as well as down. Using the iX20 mixing function we can make the aeroplane a lot more agile in roll. So more on that, let's dive into the uh, mixing page. So to get a four servo wing um, set up to command roll, easiest way is model adjust menu. Now down the left hand side, fourth menu down is mixing. Click on that. We have some pre-baked programmable mixers and with the main function um, that we're looking at today is making those flaps work as ailerons. And to do that, there isn't a pre-baked mix in there. You actually have to go and set one up. I have it set up here, which is the aileron to LFL, the left flap, which is, I believe, the one, two, three, four, fifth mix down. Let's open that one up and see what we're dealing with. So. When you get it, um, you'll see that at the top, there's you will have two boxes which are inhibit, inhibit. Now that's because it's a clean mix. The radio is saying, you choose. You tell us what the lead or the, 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 the main function is and what the, the uh, student or the follow-on um, function is. Right now you can see I have aileron as the lead and then the LFL which is left flap follows. Now you might think that that would only drive one flap. Again, with the iX20 it's quite smart in the way that our developers did it and I'll show you exactly why. Um, there's my values, we'll come back to those in a minute, um, 125 minus and minus 101.8, it's that precise. But yeah, let's go back here and inhibit that. So right now, um, nothing, see? Now, if I went to right aileron and activated it, all the other numbers stay the same, 125, 101, but now look what happens. See, when I'm rolling, both my flaps go down and vice versa, they go up. Now that's not much use to us right now because we're trying to get the airplane to roll and of course one flap is assisting the roll, the other flap is fighting it. Um, so to do that we take the RFL and make it LFL, the left flap. Okay, and now look what happens. Again, it may seem like an error but it's actually not. It's a pre-planned programming to make your life as the end user much easier. Um, Prior to this, we would have had to have done two mixes. You would have had to have mixed aileron as the lead and tagged it to the secondary channel, one, which is right flat, and then another mix to the left flat. Our developers thought, hold on a sec, we can cut that whole process in half by making one aileron mix, which is the RFL, so the flaps go up and down. And the other one, it makes logical sense to make them work opposite. So that's what we did, and then you get to choose the percentage. Now, as far as percentages are concerned, I just simply use the um, slider here, minus 125, to try and get the ailerons or flaps in line with the elevator, uh, ailerons. So if you look here, see how I'm lowering it? I'm almost at zero here now, so it's almost nothing, but then I raise it up, so I get to the ailerons just close to in line, 
with the flap. So, and the other side is the other amount. So don't worry if those numbers are slightly out. Don't worry if there's a slight delay between the aileron and uh, flap that follows. Just try and get them set up as cleanly as possible. We then have down here uh, the switch, which is the primary. Um, what controls that basically? I have it set to switch B, and then I chose a custom setup. So the center point is what drives this mix. So if you look here, when it's on the position zero, it doesn't do it. When it's on position two, it doesn't do it. Only when it's in position one. Um, but that's as simple as pressing the custom setup and highlighting which one of the switch toggle modes, 0, 1 or 2, you want to actually activate that mix. And of course, more importantly, which switch you get to choose. Um, just like all of the other switches, you can just highlight the uh, switch and then either manually input it or move the switch that you so desire to operate that mix. And that is as easy as that. And then whilst we're here, we may as well just quickly touch on the snap flap, which is elevated to flap which is very similar to what we've just done, where we set the um, mix up. First of all is I choose, choose a switch, switch B, on there, see that? And then as the lead, I set the elevator, and as the flap, I set the RFL, right flap. Remember, if I chose LFL, the, aileron, the flaps would work opposite as ailerons. We don't want that, we want them to work in conjunction with the elevator. So RFL, set your numbers, minus or plus, depending which way you want it to go. Very much like the crow, too much of this can be too much of a good thing. Um, the goal is to try and reduce the radius of a loop or increase uh, the agility, reduce the turning circle. So play with that, uh, adapt and adjust the flat mix um, till you get to the number where you can see it tightening the loop up, but not where it's actually stalling the aeroplane around a loop. Um, and yeah, be on a switch and you're back to normal. So there we have a very quick, well, as quick as I can make it, and as simple as I can make it, overview of wing types and how wing types can be applied to an aircraft like the Ultra Stick. So hopefully that will be of help. Please don't misunderstand that this is a complete overview of everything you can do with wing type. There is a lot, lot more finer details. The idea with the Master Series is to get you rolling, get you started, help explain the functions of the iX20 SE and other Spectrum radios. Please remember, we try and use the same protocol on all of our operating systems. So what applies to the 20 SE will also be relevant to other radios within our lineup. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's been of help and I look forward to meeting you and talking maybe with a guest. Um, certainly along the way, we'll be bringing people in who are much more more knowledgeable about the um, innards of the more finer detail points of the 20SE later on. But until then, thank you very much for joining us on Master Series.